Now, there are three different ways to create some pieces of functionality inside your FPGA, uh, inference, instantiation, and using the GUI. And there's pros and cons to each of them. Of course, there's not just one way to do things. There's always multiple ways to get the job done when you're using FPGAs, and this is no different. So um, a good example would be something like creating a block RAM. There are three different ways inside your FPGA that you can create a single block RAM. You can infer a block RAM, you can instantiate a block RAM, and you can use the GUI to create a block RAM using like clickable walkthrough buttons. I'm going to talk through each one of those and kind of use some of the pros and cons of each, and uh, that should help you kind of decide which way you like to create your pieces of code. Uh, in general, this applies to you know, pieces of functionality that are usually dedicated logic inside your FPGA, like DSP tiles for doing multiplies, or a tri-state buffer for doing um, high impedance, or maybe things like a PLL, phase lock loop, uh, block RAM, CERTES components, anything that's like uh, like a hard IP, hard intellectual property built into your FPGA. That's usually kind of what I'm talking about here. Um, there's different ways to, to get those to get your FPGA to instantiate those part IP pieces uh, using in inference, instantiation, and the GUI. So let's dive first of all into. Uh, well, I'm going to to give a little bit of background. I'm going to be talking about a single port block RAM um, component. So this is what it would look like here: um, port A, port B. Port B is not used. In a dual port block RAM configuration, dual port memory, uh, port B would be used. In a single port memory, we're just gonna use port A. Um, there's a clock, write enable, an address, a write data, and a read data. So port A is the only thing that accesses this block RAM. It can either write or it can read at any time. Um, if you want to learn more about block RAMs, I created a separate video about them, specifically talking about single port, dual port, all sorts of good stuff. So check that out uh, when you wanna, if you want some more background there. All right, so we want a single port block RAM. That's the goal. This is we're taking that as an example. Uh, first of all, let's instantiate a single port block RAM. I'm sorry. Let's infer one. That's the first thing. All right. And the way to do that is to write your VHDL or Verilog code, which I have right here. So here's our module. This is Verilog code. Uh, this is the name of it. We give a width and a depth parameter. So right now this is 16 bits wide and 256 uh, words deep. There's a clock as an input, write enable, address, write data, read data, which matches the port interfaces that we just described here. Um, they're they're par parameterizable, so they can, um, they can scale as width and depth changes. And without having to, um, they're not hard coded any fixed values. They use the width and depth parameters in order to scale appropriately. So um, that's how they're. That's how it's flexible. Um, the memory itself is this register here, R mem, which has a width, it has a depth, and it too is scalable. So this thing can be, you know, eight wide. 1024 deep if you like, or one bit wide, you know, 16K deep, it's very flexible. In this always block here is where the actual memory is written to. And uh, if write enable is high, then we're gonna write whatever's on the write data into the memory. And then it's always being read from as well, given at some input address. So the tools, by the tools, I mean the synthesis tools, the synthesis tools are smart enough to, to look at your Verilog code and understand that this is a relatively large piece of memory and that it should probably push that into a block RAM component inside of your FPGA. If maybe this was eight bits wide and only two deep, then it would say, okay, that's only 32 register, I'm sorry, 16 registers total. Then maybe I'm not gonna push it to a block RAM. I'm gonna just keep it in distributed register logic um, so, uh, you know, you won't take up a precious, valuable block RAM component. So the tools are pretty smart. Um, and so this is, this is some pros, pros to uh, using inference is that it's super portable. So if you're using Xilinx or Lattice or Altera, you can use this exact same piece of code here and get the same component for all vendors. So that's, that's really nice if you want to change, change vendors. Um, the... The downside to it is that 
It's also really, well, so another pro is that it's really flexible. So you can just change width, change depth, and you can infer a new block RAM size. Um, the downside to inference is that you don't always know what the tools are going to do. You're kind of relying that the tools are understanding what you're describing with VHDL or Verilog and hoping that they get it right. So that's kind of the downside there. Next is instantiation. So instantiation is when you actually, um, you need to look at the particular user guide for the family of FPGA that you are using. And usually there's like a library user guide and um, there's, there's component modules or component instantiation templates for uh, every piece of code inside of this particular, inside of your particular FPGA. So for example, let's see. Here is the Lattice memory usage guide for ICE 40 devices. It is 20 pages long. It describes what, what the memory does, um, how it's accessed, what, what signals there are, etc., cetera, uh, what the timing looks like. And here there is this instantiation template. Here's the primitive. So this is the low level primitive block that you can actually directly instantiate in Verilog. Here's the template for it right there. And they probably give one for VHDL. Yeah, here's the VHDL version as well. Um, so you can, you can use the user guide to uh, you know, guide you to instantiation. So this is, and then inside your actual code, again, going back to the, the code here, this is the instantiation. So this is the instance name. Here's the block that we are creating. Uh, you got our data, our address, our clock. This is a, a single port RAM, just like we were, we were inferring, but now we're instantiating it directly. Instantiation is good if you want something extremely specific. So you don't want to leave anything up to the tools, any interpretation up to the tools. You want this exact component with these exact settings, this bit goes here, etc. cetera. Um, instantiation is really good for that. You get exactly what you want. Um, I would say that instantiation is also the most complicated of the three. Um, instantiation gets you what you want, but the signal names are confusing. Um, you need to make sure it's wired up correctly. You could absolutely wire up things wrong uh, if you instantiate the components directly. It's also not portable at all. So this is the instantiation template for a lattice memory, a lattice single port memory. This is not the instantiation template for a Xilinx single port memory. So um, it doesn't port between vendors. One tip is that whenever I do, I do do instantiation occasionally. Um, again, if, if I need something very specific, I'll instantiate it. But um, I will often wrap the template inside of a wrapper function, which is actually like a VHDL or a Verilog wrapper that makes it more flexible. So I could just port that VHDL or Verilog from Lattice to Xilinx and uh, not have to, and only have to replace the, the, the wrapper code rather than like the whole file that contains the wrapper. Um, so a little tip there. Uh, the very last, so just to review instantiation, you get exactly what you want, but it's kind of for advanced advanced coders. Um, the very last way to make your components, your IP, your intellectual property, is through the GUI tool, the core generation. Xilinx calls it core gen, or at least they used to. Um, IP creator is another name. Uh, yeah, it's used quite a bit. Um, so this is great for beginners. I would say this is probably the best thing if you want to just like if you never really, if you're not super used to FPGAs and creating IP, this is a great place to get started. Um, so installed IP, this is Quartus, so this is for Altera or uh, Intel FPGAs. Um, you know, there's arithmetic things in here, uh, clocks, PLLs, things like that. Uh, but we're going to try to recreate the single port memory that we saw previously. And actually, I'm doing this on the fly for the first time. So I see on-chip memory here. There's a FIFO, there's a two-port RAM, there's a single-port RAM, there's ROMs, etc. So we're going to do a RAM, single-port RAM. Give it a name, ASDF, whatever. And look at this. We got this nice GUI tool. It shows you kind of what the what it's what it's going to look like when it's done. You can select how wide the output should be, how many 
how many uh, words deep it is. So this is the width and the depth that we saw previously in, in Verilog. Um, you can specify the exact memory you want. So LCs and M9K, this is like block RAM, or it can just choose automatically. Is it a single clock? Is it dual clock? So many choices here. There are like six or seven page. I'm on page two of six right here. Uh, what, you know, what alignments you want, you know, what do you want to do? All these like interesting things about what to do. Um, do you want to have X's for mast bytes? There's all sorts of choices here. I'm not even going to read all these. Um, so you can click through all these tool, this whole tool though, and it will, it will guide you in a very user friendly way often more choices than you really need, um, but in a way that's controlled and, and they kind of like hold your hand through through this generation of this IP. Um, so this is best, definitely the way that I would recommend going. Uh, if you've never done you know IP generation before, you don't know really what you're looking for or what even knobs you have at your disposal, uh, the, you know, the GUI tool is great for that. So um, you can always look at the documentation too. There's pretty good documentation about the particular core that you're trying to generate. Um, it can be a little overwhelming because there are so many knobs, you don't know which ones are important, but a lot of the time just the default settings are good enough for what you want. Um, so what else do I want to say? Uh, oh yeah, the downside. So the downside is that there are some, there aren't a lot of knobs that can be overwhelming. The other downside to this is that um, if you need to change, so let's say you want a single port block RAM that's 8 by 256 you know, these defaults are fine. Uh, you can go through this whole suite and create this this core and it'll be inside your project and you can use it. If now you also want a 16-bit wide by 256 deep single port RAM, in the you know infer in the inference version you can just change width and you're done. Uh, and here you need to like click through the six the six uh, pages of the GUI tool again. You need to import this into your project, you need to instantiate this core gen tool and build it every time the project gets rebuilt and uh, it's super tedious to create a lot of variants of the same the same thing. So um, not very flexible. Uh, so that's uh, at a high level the, the big differences between all three of those things. Um, so again just to just to kind of summarize, three ways to create uh, modules or IP blocks inside of your FPGA, inference, instantiation, and the GUI tool. Um, instantiation definitely for advanced users because you can make a lot of mistakes. The GUI holds your hand, it's probably good for beginners uh, because you can make less mistakes. Uh, and inference is the most flexible and the most portable. So if you know uh, if you know what you want, you can certainly infer it. Again, you can kind of get yourself in trouble if the tools don't do what you don't do what you expect them to do. You can get in trouble there. So, never a great uh, solution. I will say that it's inference is usually my go-to. So I will try to infer all of my uh, FPGA code if I can. Um, my backup to that is usually the GUI tool and then instantiation if I really need it, but in general I stay away from instantiation. So I uh, hope that kind of helps to clarify the differences between the three. And uh, if you like this video, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter of my channel. It really helps me to keep cranking out these videos, so uh, if you already are one, I appreciate your support very much. And uh, if you want to try some of this stuff on real FPGAs, get yourself a Go board. They're available today. Thanks very much.